Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hello. Is anybody listening? Yeah. This is from Elizabeth on Spotify. Thank f- thank oh. you for verbalizing the random, weird, ridiculous thoughts swirling in my headspace. I also have pelvic PT, and I'm finding this topic y'all are diving into, no pun intended, pure gold. Nice. Loving it. Love it. Um, here's one from Spotify. This one's from Gabby. Lots of love from the show me state. <sighs> That's Missouri for y'all that don't know. New listener here who has powered through half of your back catalog in a week. Thanks for thanks to you, I've spent or wasted so much time playing Tetris in the last few weeks that I'm now ranked number 14 in St. Louis. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Shout out, Gabby. Gabby? I moved to the city at the beginning of the pandemic from a small rural town in also Missouri. As someone who is still figuring this place out, I find your commentary about the city amusing and fascinating. Uh, You two remind me so much of my husband and myself, and I'm already seeing a positive effect on how I communicate with him after listening to you both navigate tough topics and conversation. Wow. What a review. I love the idea that- um, I didn't know you could be ranked in a locale. Yeah. Th- see, this is what's so funny about you. You knew this? Yeah, yeah. What? How? Well, I'll show you. There's all sorts of modes. The game is so much bigger than we have even scratched the surface of. We're just in that one head-to-head mode. I have completed journey mode yeah, you at have expert done journey. level. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got to see. I mean, I, I feel like you'd like to be ranked. Yes. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And there's a milf, I live there's to a be milf section of, so you could be like the number one That's ranked. That's so funny. No, I'm kidding. So what's fun, what I find really funny about this though, is that I love the idea, says, uh, I find your commentary about the city amusing and fascinating. We haven't lived there in in the Show Me State, St. Louis. 23 in, years. Yeah. Tw- so it's like... Any of our Five, commentary 25. on the city is, I find, kind of amusing. No, or if there's I like any like... tips that we've ever given oh, about yeah. St. Louis. <laughs> Please. Is the pasta house still there, though? You might want to check that out. I love the pasta house. The The science museum is phenomenal. That and hasn't I can, gone anywhere. I can say that without hesitation. We found uh, in our like junk drawer, there's a picture of me as a little kid at the Magic House. If that's still there, oh, that's a fun place. I loved the Magic House. <laughs> it's like... It's like a, it, what, how do you describe the magic house? It's magic. It's magic, but. It's like picture, a science center, but more tailored for children and like dumber things to do. Yeah, like sillier magic. There's, mm-hmm. the picture of you is there's, I think lots of people know that, have experienced this before, but there's this like globe filled with static electricity. And if you touch it, you hold your hand to See, it. this is a the so, hair, what, this your is hair, so st- funny. That's not what the picture is. And yet. <laughs> That is, to is me, to me, I might guess that that is the picture Your too. Your hair's not because, standing up no, on it? No, because that is, that is a thing to do at the Magic House Wow. 40 years ago when we were there. They probably still have that. Um, maybe they've updated it. It's just like a cute picture of me like going through some tunnel or something. Oh my gosh. I have it mm-hmm. so clearly in my mind. Little Andy, so cute. Well, that's that's totally right but that your hair is standing up on no end. no huh because that was a thing to do at the magic house but yes yeah, so you're conflating your own does memories does that picture not exist we'll look at the thing later well this is very interesting maybe we can post it on our stories because god i look so cute in it you are i have to say and you're such a handsome man so it's not surprising but you were the cutest little kid ever i had a, a small window that's no, awkward no, you years you didn't have did you? Mm, yeah, you've seen some awkward photos. I guess, kind of. And you were a late bloomer, so... Very late. Your awkward years were like 15, 16. Sure. Whereas uh, when I saw you, you were still in, you know, when I had my first crush on you. Mm. You know what I realized? Mm. Like, my first serious boyfriend, mm-hmm. who I lost something with... Mm. <laughs> um. He, I'm like, I was thinking about this the other day. I think, I think you paved the way for everything in my life. Because really? I was really into you because you were this kind of rascal, bad boy. You had long hair, meaning like chin length or longer. Okay. 
which was pretty long, probably for pretty that long. school we You would to. tuck it behind your ears. You had like a Prince poster in your locker. You played guitar. You mm-hmm. you went to the beat of your own drum. Mm-hmm. And everyone liked you. It wasn't like you were this outcast, like you weren't a brooding no. rebel. You were just you and everyone got along with you and all of these like boys and their suits and ties and like short haircuts and whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, carry forth through the years. I definitely had a crush. Like the next person I would say I had kind of a crush on, mm-hmm. um, Dusty Kelfie. Also long hair. Oh, yeah. Then the first boyfriend, Philip, <laughs> long hair. Oh, really? Now, what he lacked was that Philip. It was very Catholic. Catholic. But I will say, like, he had the long hair. I mean, right. there was a type I was going for. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And the boyfriends after that? Well... The boyfriends after that don't really count. Like, we've talked at length about the one I lived with who was more, you know, who had all the... He looked like Tom Cruise. That's cool. He he. That was a veering off course, and that wasn't really real. But he had a band. He looked like Tom Cruise. That feels like... The music part of it, yeah. That feels cool to me. Yeah, yeah. He had a band. I mean, I think the music part of it, yes, I was attracted to being, like, an artist or whatever. But what I will say, I don't, did you ever experience this? Like, and I, I, listen, a really nice guy, mm-hmm. lied a lot and stuff, but like, <laughs> honestly, I wish him well out there. I think there's 0% chance he would hear this, but ugh, famous last words. I keep, <laughs> we keep getting in kind yeah. of sticky situations yeah, 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 about, yeah. Yeah. but anyway, this I feel comfortable even if he did hear it. Mm. <laughs> Well, how many inches was it? No, no, no. Oh. What I'm going to say is, you know, I lived with him for two years. Yeah. Uh, this was at a time when I was at my lowest in my entire life. I was <laughs> because, well, what? My parents had died. Oh, I was great. Desperate yeah, yeah, yeah. to have good, a good, family. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I became a nanny so I could like infiltrate another family. I mean, I was. I was grasping at straws. Mm-hmm. And he, he checked a few boxes like musician. Mm hmm whatever um i thought i was in love with him i thought i wanted to like spend my life with him i mean i was so psychotic i was like i want to have kids right now he's gentle oh okay i sorry i keep like i'm protecting your ex (laughs) and that you're saying things that are i'm thinking are directed at him and then they end up not being like your dead parents you're like so i'm sorry i'm just being uh protective of no, Tom Cruise. No, listen, he didn't have the best version of me. I don't think I had the best version of him. And at the time, you know what? He got me through a really dark time. Like, it was companionship. He was nice. You know, he didn't treat me horribly, all the lies aside and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate him for that. But I don't think it was like, I don't think it was true love. Okay. So I think I've really been, you know, truly in love twice. Okay. You? Yeah. And then the guy that you set me up to date because of you had long hair. The Catholic guy. Yeah. Who you lost your virginity with? Well, yeah. Well, that's great. I feel like I'm putting him on blast now, though. Because he got away. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but he's Catholic. Like, he's he's Catholic. He's going to hell, is it's, what you're it's, saying. It's just not a good look. Now... Can you take his name out that I said earlier? I didn't say the whole name, but... I don't think you even said his first name. I did. You did? Mm-hmm. Got it. I can. Can I keep this part in at least? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I might dub over his name with something else, so which will make sense now when you're hearing this. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> weird. It's weird, okay. though, that it's like... Do you, it's funny, you genuinely seem a little uncomfortable of me saying the Catholic thing because you really do think he might go to hell, sort of? Oh, my God. No, I don't. Of course I don't. I don't. I don't. Do you think he still thinks yes. he might go to hell? Yes. And I and think, you think people like his who wife right him. now yes. is finding out yes, that yes. like I married someone that's going to hell? No, no, no. I'm sure the wife knew I, really? I'm, I'm assuming that the wife and him had outside of marriage <laughs> relations. But what if they didn't? What if they he was did, the only one? Sure. 
and she's finding this out right now. That now I'm saying I'm pretty sure based on what I don't know. She was a loose cookie sort of. <laughs> Honestly, I am so uncomfortable. This is what I love. This is where I like to be with you. This is my favorite. No, I have met her many times. Have many. I met her? I was yes. this the guy that I snubbed? Yes. God, I feel so. You know what? I hope he hears all of this, bro. I'm looking the camera, bro. I'm so sorry. I he was doesn't... such a little shithead. Yeah, you were. I was drunk. I totally <laughs> snubbed him. And you know what? If you don't even remember that. Maybe I have my memory wrong. I don't think I did snub you. But if you do think I snubbed you, I did snub you. And I'm so sorry, bro. Um, so can I... I do for, feel genuinely for bad listeners, about that. We went to a mutual friend's wedding. Mm-hmm. And oh, it, his wife's cute. I remember the wife. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's adorable. We all love his wife. I don't think she had sex before they got married, though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't ascribe that to her. But you do you. Okay, listen. I have nothing but respect for these people. Yeah. Um. That comes across. Just I so have you know. to don't say. Don't worry about that. That comes I have across. to say he he did very well. Like he. What he, does that mean? Meaning he's in a much better situation than we than, are. Than, <laughs> than no. you are. No. 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 Then if he had stuck with me, I'm saying he he leveled up, I think, with his wife. Um, you got me. You got the dregs. Oh, no. I got I got. You were feeling, we went to a mutual friend's wedding. You were feeling a little threatened. You were still in your, like, shithead drinking phase. Mm-hmm. You got drunk. And, like, he went to shake your hand because he's a stand-up good guy. It was end of the night. Ugh. We were so drunk. So and I told I. What a dickhead I you was. You didn't shake. He, and he didn't shake his hand. And what'd you say? You said something obnoxious. I, I'm such a dickhead. I don't remember, but yeah. God. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah, the Catholic thing, you know, it's so interesting. You live your whole life through this lens of you make these like one mistakes or two mistakes and it's you're done for okay. for eternity. Imagine you and me are very uh, religious, and we do believe that if you had sex before marriage, you're going to hell. We're under the assumption, just because we're good Catholics, for example. You're saying that- this is a hypothetical. This was my life. Okay, this great. was real. But see, it's hypothetical for me because I can't, I can't, um, I just can't relate. But I'm trying to get there right now. But anyways, we're married for how long have we been married? 15 years? Something like that? Um, wow. This is embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we're um, we're laying in bed one night, and then, I don't know, we're having a really, we're really bonded, we're really connected this night. We're sharing some secrets, and it comes out that I had sex before marriage, okay? You haven't, though. Don't worry about you, right? hmm In your mind, if you're super religious... Are you like, fuck, my husband who I built this beautiful family with, like, he's going to hell and I'm not, where this isn't forever. Are you bummed in that regard? Um, Are there people like that yeah, that would think oh, that? Yeah, oh, yeah. But see, Catholicism has a loophole. Mm. Confession. But you have to really confess it in your heart. You would have to really want... To have taken back, having done that. And what confession is, is you go into this, I mean, everyone's seen it on TV. You go into this little booth, there's a screen, you say, bless me, Father, I have sinned. It's been three weeks, two days since my last confession. And a priest who Mm -hmm. has presumably had no sexual experience, you know what, let's role play this. You're the husband, okay? You're in confession. Mm -hmm. Say, bless me, Father, I have sinned. Bless me, Father, I have sinned. All right, my child, what were your sins? Oh, God. I probably jerked off mm, 11 times this week. Uh, and um, <laughs> gosh, I what else? I didn't, um, I didn't put money into the offering this week, Oh, uh, which I felt bad about because I brought the money to do it. But then I was like, I really wanted to go to Cheesecake Factory mm-hmm. by myself. Sure. After this, and I did do that, but I told my wife that I had like a business thing, but I just went to Cheesecake Factory by myself. <laughs> my Andy. And um, also, um, this has been weighing on me for a really long time. Uh, 
I, uh, I had, um, intercourse relations, um, with another, uh, woman before I was married. I see. And it was a woman. It wasn't a little boy. Uh, I'm no. a priest. I'm <laughs> curious about these things. Okay, great. Okay, that, <laughs> no, yeah. Tell me about that. Oh. Um, In detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, <laughs> this was two years before I got married, so yeah. I was 19. I was a camp counselor, and uh, it was another one of the counselors, mm-hmm. and she was uh, she was fast. Um <laughs> And I, what, what am I telling you again? What I want to know all of the details of how, how the sin came to be. I had a crush on her. Um, it was someone she went to a different school, um, but I knew of her and I would see her um, at the camp as counselors. And this was our second year at the same camp as counselors. Anyways, we were so crushing. Camp Tomsock? And, and we had, um, no, it wasn't. I, it doesn't. Anyways, I had a crush on her, <laughs> and we had made out the summer before, and then anyways, we went skinny dipping one night, and um, all the rest of the, our friends, they went back to camp early, or we're, we were there, and I think she must have done this before, because like it happened, and it happened fast. And, in the like, water? She, in No, we got on the little floaty dock thing. Uh-huh. Um, and what did she look like? Like, when you saw her naked? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like... Temptation, father. Like I, it was. I okay. was. Anyways, I need to she cut know it. Okay, we're what stopping. she knew what to do. Andy, we're st- uh, <laughs> Please stop. Yeah. Okay, that was fun. My, I was trying to make a point in doing that, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was how fucking weird it is that, like, me as a teenage girl, I'm going to confess sins about like. I touched a penis or whatever. Like, but did you really do that? Yes. And how many people are really doing that part? As like a teenager, you said, I know this about you. There's no chance in hell you admitted (laughs) that you um, lost your virginity in confession. No, no, I didn't because. You would have gone, he would have, it would have reinforced the feeling that you're going to hell. In some ways, even though it's supposed to absolve you. I did my own absolution. Because after it happened... You sprayed holy water on it? <laughs> on it. <laughs> I, I, I said a thousand Hail Marys. I stayed but up all night. But then you had night. sex again. Well, then we found a loophole, which was like... The butt. No. <laughs> no, I never... No, I, did, I was not a butt girl. But I'll you say a lot of those Catholic girls. girls, not my friends, but a lot of the Catholic girls... You would associate with them. <sighs> At the big Catholic universities. Oh. I mean, that's a loophole. So my our loophole was, well, if we get married someday, then maybe retroactively, uh, it's like a stepping stone. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so then we continued on. We went forth. Okay. I think we can move on from this because I'm getting, a, I'm, now I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable. It seems like you really enjoyed that kind of physical sexual connection with this husband that to be that didn't come to be and now all that we're left with is him going to hell and you married a jew i just can't i can't wrap my head around all of it now do you know what i mean you know what's kind of wait can i just finish the priest thing yeah how think about this Mm -hmm. how weird is it that it's so weird it's so creepy and weird it's so creepy and you know what's creepy and i for all of our religious listeners i feel really horrible even that this even crossed my mind but like what do you think the average this is really gross what do you think of those confessional booths what do you think the percentage of them if all catholic churches have some sort of semen residue somewhere in them Oh, pretty high. Pretty high. Isn't that dark? <laughs> it's very dark. But you were like, ooh, and then <laughs> I saw you do the math on it, and you're like, because it's these prob- repressed men. Listen, yeah, there's a it's repressed men who, you know what? If we alleviated this sex before marriage thing, 
And also just like the priest that can get married and Priests stuff. should be able to get married and have yeah. sexual intercourse and stuff. So, Like, I cannot even think about the amount of pain and human suffering that would be alleviated. Take out all of the, I mean, so much abuse and stuff. I, obviously, that's different if it's with, like, children. That's a whole other... And that's not what I was alluding <laughs> I know, to about I know, I know. You're yeah, alluding yeah. to a girl coming in and being like, I gave a guy a blowjob or whatever. And or, then you leave and then the priest jerks off. Or that or, it's so, like... Yeah, exactly. Anything. Fill in any blank. And I even said, even I said other bitch. people going in. Maybe not not I'm not even just talking priest semen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> priest semen. Okay. I'm just saying I'm just saying I wouldn't take a black light to a confessional booth. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I just But by and large, I think it would be priest semen. I mean Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Abort. Let's abort. Okay. Listen. <laughs> we can't abort. We're in church. Um, listen. What, like, on top of the abuse and stuff, this, mm -hmm. this, what I lived with, the guilt and shame of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For men. And, you know, we've seen it time and time again, these hardcore evangelicals who ends up cheating on their wife or had affairs with other men or whatever it oh, is. Sure. I mean, it's the shame of all of these stigmas, like being gay, having sex out of marriage, all of these rules mm -hmm. that are oppressive and like arbitrary and for no good yeah. reason. Without those, because those men who carry that shame in secret mm -hmm. do so much damage. They're coming at the world and, and they are victims too. They're victims of the same yeah. thing, but they're, they, you know, these men who, like, feel like outwardly they have to present this perfect image, but inwardly feel genuinely like they're going to go to hell because of what they've done mm -hmm. or feel so ashamed about X, Y, Z. I mean, priests themselves, like, feel ashamed if they masturbate or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That affects, like, all of society, because then it, it affects, like, how they approach things. And I feel like there's a lot of overcompensation and being judgmental of others. And you know what I mean? It's yeah, but do you think of, you know, there's been so many instances of, like, say, uh, heads of, like, some of these, like, big super churches that, you know, get caught doing this horrible thing. Yeah. I think there's two different types of guy here, right? There's the ones that are walking the walk legitimately and yes. really are uh, in their minds walking in the path of God, if you will, and are carrying that huge amounts of guilt, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason can't help themselves and are doing these ter terrible things. And then putting that energy out into the world, right? Yeah. And then there's these ones that I think get just caught up in the power of all of it and the money of all of it and don't even ascribe to to yes. the, the religious aspect of, of all and probably don't for a second give a shit that they're adulterers, et cetera, right? I mean, that's kind of, I kind of think Ron DeSantis is that for, like, I don't think he really, I mean, I think he's evil, but I don't think he really is so homophobic. Like, I oh. think he's capitalizing on the mindset of, a large percentage of his constituents yeah. that they want, like they're desperate for this excuse to, to voice. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's so crazy. Like how many steps back we've taken, especially on LGBTQ rights. Like now in Florida, you cannot say gay. Like you can't talk about gayness or, I mean, it's just so crazy, but I think he, he is about the power, and he's capitalizing on what I, you know, see as deep-seated hatred and, like, internalized homophobia and... He's po he's, play he's playing politics. But I do think, like, Catholic Catholicism and far-right Christianity and get so caught up in these rules because the rules are so overwhelming, like... Mm. That you lose sight of, I mean, I do miss a Catholic Mass, and there were really great things I learned from sermons. Yeah, there's sermons. good messages and so on. There are great sermons, messages. For sure. You lose there's sight of great that. great community. I mean, look at the far right now. It's just 
I'm just going to be honest. It's a hate filled. They they worship at what I see as a hateful God, the way they act in turn. But it's interesting too. I wonder how, and I'm sure we have some religious uh, listeners right now that are yelling at us because I think I I would have to imagine that what we see in the media of these religious, let's call them far right Christian groups, if you will, that um, that that can't be that can't make up the majority of these types of churches and whatnot. Like, I wonder how fringe that is. Like, is there, um, like if you go to Catholic mass in, let's say St. Louis, for example, are those people walking out of there? Are they like fucking pro Trump? Like, fu- like, you know, like, are they going hard on those issues or are we just seeing that, the crazies in the media. And then we also know that so many of these big lobbying, huge money factory churches are also pouring their money into those horrible candidates and these horrible values too. Like, is that shit seeping into the sermons at these places? Oh yeah. Like that's such a bummer, but I wonder to what extent, right? Like, do you think it's like really big or I like that? I'm curious about that. Do you know I what know. I mean? Like it's, what are like these sermons sm- look like? It's smoke and mirrors. And also like, I mean, the fact that there are these laws being made in places like Florida, you know, and all of the anti-abortion, however many states now you can't get an abortion in. Right, right. It's like, how much does the population of like religious groups care about that? Mm-hmm. Versus, like, how much is put behind getting candidates into office who make the changes? Like, do you know what I mean? Sure. I don't know. But what I do know is that it's become much more acceptable for people to be hateful openly. Yes. Way, you're... way, way more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a huge bummer. I mean, I think back to this, speaking of Gabby, like, St. Louis actually, like, St. Louis, the core of St. Louis is very liberal the yeah the downtown ish area there's like a big wonderful liberal movement that's happening there obviously and but in you know, historically though one of the most racist cities in the country yes it's and, and the, also once you get out of that liberal bubble it's very conservative it's very conservative missouri obviously is one of the most yeah. conservative <clears throat> states i mean so is idaho sure yeah the people who have money there and power are very conservative. Now, this gets into, I mean, those are the people that I knew in St. Louis. Like, I went to school with their kids. The school that you and I both went to was, like, a very fancy prep school. Yeah. You know, neither of us were in the, like, super rich kids club there, obviously. But it almost, like, those people, I feel like, want conservative. They're fiscally conservative. Yeah, totally. But that's bullshit. You can't be fiscally conservative and also fiscally conservative honestly just means you're greedy and you want more of the pie. You don't want to let go of the piece of the pie you have and the power you have. Right. Um, but people I think... will say like trickle down economics. Well, that is bullshit. It doesn't work. You can't just say it and wish for it to work the way you're saying it works. It doesn't. And so... Fiscally conservative just means you value your money over everyone else's well-being. Sure. Because you can't be fiscally conservative but socially liberal because it doesn't work that way. Like, fiscally conservative just means conservative. So that's – but people are putting – pumping massive amounts of money into campaigns and being behind Trump – and I feel like there is also the thing of, like, you convince yourself that you're behind Trump, and then you're kind of joining the cult of Trump, and now you're buying into it all, and you can't see past that, kind of, and you you can't be on the other side of the fence looking at it yeah. objectively. Yeah. So, anyway. But St. Louis, what I will say is that, by and large... Everyone there is very kind, like, on the surface. I feel like people want to do well. The religious people I, you know, knew and I was one of them all wanted good things in the world. And But all of these 
this is kind of my point. I feel like all of these rules that you have to abide by and then um, really makes it hard to focus on what's really important in religious teachings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's look, weird. we covered it all. We did it. We need to talk about <laughs> what's happened in our lives. Speaking of like, speaking of kind of fanatics, yes. <laughs> let's, what a segue. We went viral. We went viral. I want to see what it's at right now. So we put up, uh, as we put up our clips on Instagram every week at Nobody's Listening, right? I put up one of the clips last week was a how to care for your cast iron skillet pan. <laughs> if you're a listener to this show, you know that I love my cast iron pan. It was just a matter of time before we made a cast iron clip. And it was just, I just want to say this. Simply, here's what I do to care for my cast iron skillet. It's not a, this is what you must do and you can't do anything else. And I have all of the answers and I am I am God. Yeah. I'm the God, I'm the Lord God of cast iron skillets. And just for an example of how this works, and we had no idea what we were in store for, you know, we try to make the clips. I try to make sure there's a clip up the morning that the podcast episode comes out so you guys can see a clip the day that episode dropped. Like, we're kind of just mindful when we're figuring out when to put these out. Mm-hmm. I put this cast iron clip. It was like a Monday evening, and I was like to Elizabeth, hey, I, I finished this. Should I just put this up now? Mm-hmm. And both of us were like, yeah, it's the cast. It the does ca- not matter. <laughs> it's the cast iron clip. It doesn't matter what time. Yeah. And we put it up. And good golly. So it just took off and it's set 2.2 million <laughs> right now. We're recording this on a Friday. It's been um, up for three no, and a half days. No stopping in sight. And But what is so interesting, uh, there are a lot of interesting There's things about this. There's a lot of interesting things about this. The first thing I find very interesting is that, but you've kind of explained to me why this is. Yeah. But it hasn't translated to like, our other videos. I mm-hmm. would think when a video like that goes viral, then like other people are like, oh, I'll check this out. Who are these people? Yeah. But the video you posted after that since then yeah. is still at 4,100 views. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, the big divide between 2.2 2 million. million. And the one before it is at, you know, 6,000. So whatever. It's It didn't translate sure. to eyeballs or ear buds Mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a bummer but also you explained to me it's i didn't find it that surprising at all with this was this video of all our videos is different from all the other ones this is yeah it's a a little psa it's a how to clean your skillet right so and i also think you're so good at the videos and showing how it's done that it's such a nice like quick concise concise thing of something that people struggle with Mm. so people are sharing it now people have very strong fanatical opinions (laughs) about the right way to clean your cast iron skillet yeah uh there are a thousand comments on this post Mm -hmm. many many of them are railing against you for using canola oil, which apparently is poison. Wow, did I step into that. You are using you used an aerosol canola oil, which mm-hmm. is also, it's even more poisonous poison. Now that I'll cop to that the aerosol oils, that's probably not great. But, but also, the whole canola oil thing, we did a little deep dive on. Apparently it is a very popular trend on TikTok that canola oil has been become the enemy so there is a lot of anti-canola isn't out there. it like anti-vaxxers it's kind of going into that like anti-chemicals anything toxic it's anything. just super refined and listen it's probably not great for you but i did read seeing this there there were articles this last month it's also a recent thing we stepped into a moment we didn't know we were stepping <laughs> into right but i there were articles by big publications that were like why is why are people hating on canola oil so much right now and is it bad and the thing is like no it's not that bad like it didn't all of a sudden become bad like it is a refined oil refined things aren't that great it's but processed anyways, it's but not it's processed but it's not nowhere near as bad as all these comments are making out. Well, and also there have been 
we what's nice about it being so big is like you and I have not not once felt the need to be like engage at all we're just watching this play out watching like and there have been like siri i've watched serious arguments happen and then resolve it's a beautiful thing when they go hey man (laughs) sorry i came at you too hard but then people it's like people listen clean your cast iron skill however the fuck you want fuck you want this is how andy does it and this was really just for our listeners what this experiment showed me is how amazing our listeners are because Mm. we never get this mean spirited evil trolley comment Mm-mm. the comments were so mean <laughs> well okay one of our listeners for example brainy laney shout out shout out said in andy we trust with little prayer hands in a skillet love it great comment as opposed to john said i don't trust men who don't cut their hair or shave with food advice you know, so that's the difference. Oh, it was coming at you. Coming at me. I deleted one comment that included the R word directed oh. towards you. Oh. Um, I, there were, now, now we get into, there's so much to unpack here. Also, um, the, this, I want to go over everyone's beef with this because it's kind of funny. Yeah. Which is never put water on a cast iron skillet. Okay. Yeah, I saw that a few times. I'm like, what are you talking about? Which is wild. Yeah. Not canola oil. I mean, so many canola oils. I mean, it's half of it's canola oil. One was canola oil, suck my D. Like, you know, it's just very angry about canola oil. And meanwhile, you're doing like the tiniest spritz of canola oil. It's not like you're whatever. Yeah. But then everyone's like, well, what do you use? And it's like, this was right up until canola oil. I use olive oil. Well, you don't want to use olive oil because olive oil has a low burn point you know olive oil is not a high heat oil you don't want to use it i might recommend like an avocado oil then avocado oil fine (laughs) do avocado oil but people are coming in with bacon grease and beef tallow and i'm like oh yeah let me just grab my beef tallow well what you don't know is i'm vegetarian you know Mm -hmm. people are vegetarian and also like ew Mm. and so every every so then people are like never let water touch a pan then so during this video I interrupted you <laughs> three quick times by going like, you're like, so you rinse it? And yeah. I said, with water? He said, yep, water. And I was just trying to make it so clear, like, which I knew you would appreciate mm-hmm. the clearness of like, you rinse it with water. Because yeah. honestly, I don't fucking know. Right. Maybe you, the way people treat their cast iron skillets, and I had heard you don't touch it with water, so I wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I said all of 17 words in this whole video. Yeah. People are upset with me. Yeah, they are. Real mad. Yeah. I am so annoying to so many people. Someone said, this is why I don't like talking to people, (laughs) is how much... (laughs) This girl interrupted him. Yeah. And one person just said her voice and then crying smiley face. (laughs) (laughs) Just tough. (laughs) Uh, You know, and I was like, whoa, I think this is kind of a glimpse into the, I don't look at YouTube comments or anything. They're horrible. They're like, people are so mean yeah do you think we're not seeing this or they don't just they just don't fucking care or they hope we see it i don't know like the the this attack on you for this stuff and i grabbed two comments that really sum it up because there was what i was thinking what i was thinking is like why would people don't they understand that you're trying to clarify, sort of? Like, yeah. it seemed absurd. But so I saw back-to-back comments, which I thought this was a great exchange. One, someone said, rinse with water. No, vodka. Yes, water, in all caps, to you, right? Uh-huh. But then this was a really thoughtful reply that I'm like, this is what I would have said to this woman. She, you, Elizabeth, my beautiful wife, is so great at making sure the informative details are in there that he's not including. It makes me realize that someone could watch this and have bias that she's dumb asking this question when in reality she's providing more information and is very intelligent in communicating. (laughs) I didn't see that. Yeah. (sighs) 
How, that Who really left that comment? God bless Nazanin you. Nazanine Bo. Nazanine Bo, thank you. But what is so funny is I all come these... across as so stupid. What do you rinse it with? <laughs> Someone wrote, uh, Jesus' tears? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, yes, right. Okay. But what is so crazy is this video blows up in you and I. The whole time it was a surreal experience because we really didn't care. We really weren't looking at this that much because it was a fucking cast iron video. If it had been one of our podcast videos, we would have been been on cloud nine. But this was really just like, this is crazy. It was just this weird thing we we were like kind of observing. And just the idea of all these people talking shit, like sitting on their phones weighing in. I'm like, I've never done that. I can't ever imagine doing that well you know it's just so bizarre to me not to tie it into what i was talking about before but there's a lot of anger out there right now yeah and i feel like particularly with men Mm -hmm. and but women too i mean i will say most of the comments calling me an idiot or that i'm annoying or i'm so annoying that makes people not want to talk to people Mm -hmm. were for from women which I was like, That's disappointing. huh, what's that? You know, that seems like something to look at. But I think from men right now, there's a lot of anger. And for reason, I mean, for reasons everyone listening probably can recognize. And I'm not saying it's justified or warranted, but I'm like, I think this is an outlet for anger when people feel like they don't have other outlets. Do you think some of it's that? And then do you think that some, like, okay, we got a lot of canola comments, which that makes sense. In the air, there's canola the bad. So people yeah. are like, whoa, not canola, right? But mm-hmm. then there's all these other annoying, mean-spirited comments. Like, personal. <laughs> do you think some of those people, one, are they just dicks? Two, do you think that they are just trying to, like, stoke the fire and having fun being a troll? Like, do people enjoy being the troll or are they miserable like just angry people okay or is it both all across the spectrum i think it's a bunch of things i think it is across the spectrum i actually think it's fewer just wanting to be the troll like and don't care i actually think in these comments people do care they're passionate about it Mm -hmm. because in a lot of the arguments i saw there they were they had things to back up what they were saying okay and then the other person would have things to back up what they were saying so i'm okay with that but um, but in a very mean spirited way, like, then yeah, dummy, like, you know, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything's, but I also feel, and I am so guilty of this. Mm. We are in a time where people feel like they need to know the best way to do this one thing. Mm. Everything. There's one answer for everything. Right. I feel like I had something happen regarding this recently. Where I was like, oh, yeah, there are many ways to do things, and there's not the one right way. And, I mean, it kind of goes into our political discourse. Like, there's one way of thinking, Mm -hmm. and my way is the right way, and your way is the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. And, like, this is a microcosm of all of that, Mm -hmm. which is everyone's fighting about their way is the only way. Right. But the truth is... There are many, many ways. And there then there was a whole subsection, which is like you can totally use dish soap on cast iron skillets, right. which I think is true. Once which we it's talk seasoned, about in our pocket, we made a little clip. It's edited. You know, so uh, I think what I think this is, is people are desperate for the need to be right and to feel like they are doing it the right way. And mm. whether that comes to their cast iron skillet or like their life. Interesting. And the truth is, there's not really any exact right way. Everyone's different. Everyone, right, right, right. you know, do what works for you. Mm-hmm. There's no right way to exercise. There's no right way to eat. There's no right way to dress. There's no, you know, it, like people are so obsessed with, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, remember when it was like, everyone's going to dress like Steve Jobs because it, lowers your decision Mm -hmm. fatigue for the day or whatever yeah like everyone's obsessed with like life efficiency life hacks (laughs) life hacks yeah but also life hack optimization that's what it is i'm thinking about like life optimization yeah 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 when the truth is like that is so uh i think detrimental to the human experience to be like 
there's one way we should all be doing things because that, you know, limits the diversity of experience. I see that, but I also, I think I could argue a little bit against that because, well, uh, some of the stuff you're saying, like the Steve Jobs thing makes sense to me in a way. But you don't do it. I mean, if you look at our videos, so I'm wearing like a black shirt on but every single But that's a choice. You're like, yeah, but that's a choice. For the videos. That's sort of true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but I do like that. Am I, I busting you right now? No, no, no. I, yeah, yeah. But I wear a black shirt a lot during life, right? Uh-huh. But I'm not trying to say that I'm trying to do a Steve Jobs thing, but I understand the if you can make your life simpler in some ways to make – you have time for other things. Like, right. I like that stuff. I but, think we're but, saying two different things, sort of. No, I think we're actually saying the same thing. Okay. Which is, like, if that works for you, awesome. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean it's the right way for everyone. Right. And that should be, that's true for everything. Like, um, I saw a really interesting little reel, actually, <laughs> that this guy, I don't even know what the context was, but this guy was saying... Someone was, like, recording something and commenting on how people were behaving in a way he didn't like. And this guy who's standing next to him goes, never attribute malice to what could be – to what you could attribute incompetence to. So if someone – if you think someone's being, like, mean to you – don't attribute it to malice, like what we're saying, like the trolls mm. being like, attribute it to like naivete or incompetence or not understanding the context or, yeah. which I love that, especially as we're going into like the presidential election and having to deal with, I'm sure we're going to get heated, people are going to get heated, upset, whatever. Right, right, right. Just to remember, like in those people's hearts, it's not usually malice, I think. And the people who don't see things the way you do, yeah, they are just viewing the world through a lens with what they have and what their experiences have been. And um, I feel like any kind of, I mean, going back to the like hate thing, I think Ron DeSantis is evil and mm-hmm. is capitalizing on. But the people in his state who are suddenly feeling like, oh, I'm allowed to shout my homophobia loud and proud. Sure. You know, it, that is hateful and it's so harmful. Right. But I also think, like, they they are doing that because they've been indoctrinated to fear this other. Let me, okay, wait, let me right? p- throw out another example of something I saw last week that I think funnels into this and kind of brings it back to the motivation of all these people, right? Yeah, Which that's what I we're think talking we're, about. I think we're finding out that there's all sorts of different motivations, it seems like. Mm-hmm. There was a thing last week that, so Chick-fil-A came under fire a few years ago, maybe even more than that, right? Yeah. About um, they're a religiously owned restaurant. They have, you know, conservative values. They've donated to some anti-LGBTQ I, yeah. things. I'm laughing because, you know, you occasionally go to Chick-fil-A with our gay friend because it makes you feel like you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my it's my, my Chick-fil-A pass. God, the sandwiches are good. Um, but so this happened. It, it probably happened longer than five years ago. Anyways, Chick-fil-A is still closed on Sundays. I didn't mean to say gay friend like we had a gay friend, by the way. <laughs> One uh, of our many. But anyways, I, I'm assuming in that kerfuffle that happened – they did some a little course correcting, and they have like a diversity program uh, when it comes to hiring and all that stuff. And they have like a department in Chick Fil A for that, right? Does so, that is that LGBTQ inclusive? Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe okay. so. Yeah, yeah. It's, They're still like closed on Sundays. Right, right. But that's for the Lord. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but so, anyways, this has been set up for years now like mm-hmm. a few years right there and there's been a person that has been the head of this initiative for years but for whatever reason some troll i'm assuming somehow this becomes an issue last week and it's like boycott chick-fil-a oh because it's 
the right boycotting it because like we can't have a Chick-fil-A that is hiring diverse people. Right? So it's wow. so absurd, right? That I'm like, and in some of the, like, if you read some of the news articles on this, like, there's like quotes from like, you know, trolley politicians that are like, what's next? They're going to put like semen in our lemonade or weird shit like. Priest semen? No, I don't think priest semen. But okay. like, anyways, ridiculous, like trolley mm-hmm. tweets from like bigger politics, like weird stuff. But I'm like, and and then the media comes back and they're like, you fucking idiots. Like, this department's been around for years. Like, right. And I'm like, but did someone just see this as like a dumb opportunity of like a fun thing to rabble rouse people one day? Like, it's such a dumb fucking thing that then sparks. And it's like, and then. I, I Am I making any yes, sense? Yes, you are. Well, I, I was just it's looking. It's just so ridiculous. I was looking at this because I'm like, do you know right now this big, there's this big Republican kerfuffle over gas stoves? Like, oh, right. Yeah. I've, I haven't followed it that closely. I haven't either. So I don't want to speak to it too much. But like, just knowing that world, I'm like, is this, are they rallying? This is their attempt to rally against the liberals who want to fight climate change and their way of doing it is like blocking the passage of bills that limits the amount of gas stoves that are used or like right, 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 right. it just seems like such a stupid um performative band-aid and hateful like right now the the climate change is such an amazing uh topic to take a look at and how like that's the one that I'm like, we can't all unite on this. You're right. <laughs> I mean, right. okay, I understand some of the other things, but like, this is a uh, this is an existential threat to us right now, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're fighting to defend like our demise. Yeah, it's great. Wild. It, it, it's all of it's. It's just crazy in that people, what I also think is crazy is that these things get traction these days. Like the gas stove thing got so much traction. People got so up in arms. People now are boycotting Chick-fil-A where five years ago it was, you know, it was the left boycotting uh, Chick-fil-A for good reason. And now it's like the right boycotting Chick-fil-A for an absurd. Yeah. Like, but it. Well, wasn't, didn't that happen with Nike also or something like. Nike's tricky territory. <laughs> is it? It is because it's like they're such a cool trickier than than priests. <laughs> I mean, gets... we have. What are we doing? Nike... We're alienating anyone we, know, we can, <laughs> and we know nothing. I can't. We can't weigh in this, but it's like, how can like Nike? You know, there's been horrible sweatshop stuff that's come out over the years, and of course, and I'm saying in quotes, they've tried to course correct but it's like how much course correcting can you do if you're making millions of sneakers every day do you know what i mean it's just like all of us are walking hypocrisies no matter what i know you know what i mean i do know that like it's it's true it makes it hard to live with yourself no i'm I'm cool (laughs) (laughs) but anyways getting back to our viral video yeah. What a fun, weird, fun dumb and weird totally. ride that was so uneventful for us in many ways. <laughs> um, right now, I'm just. But it was neat. It was neat that we saw that a video could um, explode. Yes, it was neat to see that. And thanks for all your sweet comments. And yeah, I can I tell which. Buy, one. I might buy avocado oil next time I'm at the grocery store. I loved seeing, I could tell when it was a somebody. You always knew if it was a somebody. Because it's an, a nice comment and like, sure enough. It makes, it makes, makes, makes me grow even fonder for I know. our, we our have, listeners. We have amazing, amazing listeners. I have to say, in talking to some of my friends who have podcasts and not, I mean, they have amazing listeners too, but it is like really a special community and so I feel very grateful for it. Speaking of community... 
if you want. I knew you were going to do that. You did. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a monthly bonus episode that comes out mid-month every month, please join us over on patreon.com slash nobody's listening right. It also includes all of our back catalog Totally Lames, Totally Mommies, Totally Marrieds, Totally Married Laters. Mm. Um, and I remember that one. Love it. Occasional Mario Kart tournaments, lemon bar recipes, lots of fun stuff over there. I would love to give you a real quick recap of some food stuff that happened to me. Remember a few episodes ago we were talking about, I don't remember the specific experience, but just having like a really delightful experience with like a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant. Yes. I had like wham, bam, bam, three restaurants in two days situation where I was like just joy. Okay. Number one, I stopped at Cracker Barrel the other day. And another at, problematic? May, yeah, maybe. We, we need to look into how they've course corrected. Oh, uh. <laughs> And he's all about the course correction. I need, I need to see some sort of gesture. It doesn't have to be much. I need to see something. That's okay, all. Okay. I need to see something. But anyways, I walk into Cracker Barrel. I'm waiting in the host line to be sat. And there's like an older senior citizen couple that uh, are in front of me. And they look like, they just look really nice. The guy looks like, almost like... um Who's the the old black guy that did the did the Star Wars voice? Star Earl Wars. Jones. Um, James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. So he looks like he looks like um, just like a sweet James Earl Jones guy. Mm -hmm. And then the hostess kid, he's probably like twenty three. He's got like a real funky haircut, and he's just having fun. And behind him, they have like the specials, like the posters, and there's a big mimosa poster. Mm -hmm. And so. He says, he says, hey, and just so you know, we got mimosas. And if you want to get drunk, drunk at Cracker Barrel, that's between you and God. <laughs> Come this way to like seat them. And it just delighted me so oh much. Uh, so that was great. Then that same day, I stopped at Cafe Rio. God, <laughs> what, a, what a day. Jeez Louise. And both of these were like outside of LA by like 40 minutes. And there, if for those that don't know, Cafe Rio is kind of like Chipotle where you get in the line and you're telling what you want on your burrito. And so the guy, this guy's got a vibe. He is loving life. And I can see him chatting up all every customer so much so that I'm like a little nervous. Like, fuck, do I got to deal with this? Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm very nice and pleasant. And he's also sizing customers up, guessing what they're going to order. Oh, what fun. Pretty <laughs> fun, pretty wild. And so I get up there and I, I wanted the barbacoa burrito. And he goes, let me guess medium hot sauce and i was like yeah like <laughs> you got it you, you got he busted it. you uh and then he was in such a good mood that then he started singing along to all the music that was playing okay and i wanted to ask you like i didn't know how to deal with it because part of me was like this guy was fucking delightful yeah but it also crossed a boundary for me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also stuck in a line with other people with a man making burritos and singing pumped up kicks. And like, I don't know what to do with my eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, do I acknowledge some of the other customers? Are they experiencing this like me? Uh -huh. When do I tell them I want my chips and queso? Is this guy, the guy to ask that with? Do you he's wait singing. for the bridge? Or? Yeah, like... <laughs> I didn't know what to do, but I was also delighted. Like, what do you do in those situations where it becomes you, too much? Well, you just have to go along for the ride. And I know I'm saying this as a huge hypocrite who last week was complaining about cardamom guy, the barista, talking about cardamom and spices. And I was right. just like, I was in such a mood that I was just like, I had my AirPods in and I just was like, I'm not giving anything. But this guy, it sounds like, would break you like you have two choices mm -hmm. right you either are a grumpy asshole like i was yeah but if it becomes that big where he's singing and stuff like yeah. you have no other choice and that's kind of his gift yeah. is that he makes it so that you have no other choice 
but to relent and go along. And you don't know, there might be someone in that line who is having the worst day of their life. Life has gotten so grim and dark mm-hmm. that they've lost the ability to feel. No, and they're yeah. there and they're, you know, in a very dark place and are hopeless and lack feeling and are in line. And that guy makes them smile and makes them go feel a little lighter because they have to. Yeah. What a nice thing. And also probably one of the easier guesses of the day to guess what that down out person's going to order. Like he probably knows exactly. What would it be? Because you've seen this. Well, he did size up the guy after me with shredded chicken, which I'm like, I did, that's not what I would have guessed. Um, was he right? No, he was wrong. The guy wanted grilled chicken. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the sad order would be. But you're definitely getting it wet style, which is when they put enchilada <laughs> sauce on top and cheese and then put it through the oven on your burrito. Yeah. But I love what you're saying. And I want to say to this guy's credit, he was brightening people's day. Aww. He brightened mine. But then I got then I then I got into uncomfortable zone. I love the not knowing where to look. That is so great. And then okay, so then I'm eating my burrito outside, and he. he I also think he was like El Jefe, like in charge of oh, the nice. joint. Yeah. Oh, he's, I love that. He's then on his break. He comes around from some other door, like a back door, to the patio area, and he jumps over the like divider, like kind of you would like jump over a stair banister. And then sits down and then pulls out his phone and starts watching YouTube, I think like a Pokemon video at a ridiculous volume, which I was like, wow, that's ballsy. Uh, But he was living his best life. I guess. Okay. You lost me with the video. I know. You lost me too. But that's why (laughs) I want to share it because it it was an important detail. There's there's been an epidemic, at Mm. least around me. This happened twice. I went to Figaro, the French place, which I, is a place I love to write in Los Feliz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great food. And I love it. It's very French. They don't bother you for with the check until oh. like you can be there forever. Yeah, yeah. And two different times I'm sitting there writing and it's a very like, you know, quaint, charming kind of cafe style place. Yeah. People have come in and either been having a loud like FaceTime video talk at the table, like you know they how sit I feel alone. About that. No, well, no. One guy came in and he's playing like legitimately playing on his phone speaker music. There's already like French cafe music playing. Did he have it on walking in or in not turn it off and he kept it on no, for a little no. bit? No, he had. He turned it on and he wanted to have this music while he ate. Whoa! Now you and Was I. Was he foreign? W- no, he had. All I can say about him, God bless him, was he had had a lot of work done, like a massive amount of work done. How old? Between like 45 and 90. I don't know. (laughs) Andy. That's a weird picture. That kind of person with with like a scarf. And needs, uh, well, I'm getting that and then needs the The own soundtrack. So I got up and moved. What kind of music? Well, like, it was weird. It was kind of all over the map. There was, like, country at one point. It was, I got up and moved because I was just so annoyed and, like, other people moved. And I'm like, are you oblivious, sir, that everyone around you is bailing? You had to move and, like, take care of that with your server? Like, Yes. And they kind of were like, people are crazy. So then you and I went to Millie's and there was a woman behind us who was having a very loud, either watching a video And I'm like, do people not understand that phone speakers Mm -hmm. don't sound like people there? Mm -hmm. Like, it is very distracting and rude. So I, you know, I love that guy's spirit, but he lost me at the video. I think that's really rude and his bad manners. But you made me think of, I read something recently that a woman in, like, Scotland or... Greenland, somewhere in one of those lands, mm-hmm. they they discovered that she feels no pain, mm. and they are they're testing her to try to find the genetic code that causes someone to not feel pain, because they can they're hoping that that will help them in discovering 
pain solutions for people who are in chronic pain, oh. like genetic treatment, stuff like that. Okay. But it was really interesting because she also, it, it like as a little addendum onto this, was like it. she also feels little to no fear or anxiety. Whoa. And I was thinking like, what would life be like if you could, I mean, in some ways, fear, I think, I mean, fear for me is such a big part of the human experience yeah, yeah, <laughs> that I'm yeah. like, I can't even fathom it. But also, like, would it be wonderful? So she has I don't kids. Think so. I don't think so. She has kids. And I'm like, can the kids relate? Can she relate to her kids in a way that feels like deep and authentic? You know, yeah. I'm like, is she wonderful? To, you know, like, who is that person who doesn't feel fear, anxiety, or pain? I don't know how to answer that. I because my gut reaction is like that's probably terrible, but maybe it's delightful. I don't know. It might be delightful. I mean, I you think lose that... a lot of perspective though, right? Like, yeah. Well, I don't know, but it's made me when I think about that. I'm like, why not just be happy? Why not be the Rio Cafe? I love that he's like El Jefe because you don't usually think of management as like setting that kind of tone. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if his employees actually find it incredibly annoying. But that's the other problem. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really tricky. Well, I'm going to try to be a little bit more like him. But I think that's different than what you're saying of the like not having anxiety or pain yeah it's that's more of a things. that's more of a serene like for example this guy now i wish i had i wish we had talked about this before i learned of the pokemon video mm -hmm. i suspect he actually has a lot of pain and fear in his life <laughs> jeez <laughs> you know like <laughs> painting the picture of that someone as we all do but What's i'm just worse <laughs> <laughs> Leaving a little fucking canola oil hatred comment on a viral video or us fucking dissecting <laughs> this fucking guy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you about oh pain. God. I think this guy has it. <laughs> no. Oh, no. But I'm saying this in a in an appreciative way. Mm. Like... I don't think I think I th to your point. I think the person who has never felt pain or fear or anxiety mm -hmm. is not singing and brightening people's days like that. I think they're just going through life like in a more content fashion. Yeah, and well, uh, and the other thing, just to reiterate, also was like the yeah the this guy is bringing joyful vibes to people that cross his path. And what is funny is it's someone like me when I talk about n not knowing where to put my eyes. I don't know how to handle that. And I think a lot of people don't know how to handle that, which is sad. We should feel less uncomfortable in those kind of happy things. All, a similar analogy might be like sometimes people are sheepish about dancing. I know I'm sheepish about dancing sometimes. I love sometime, to dance. Right? Where it's like- I'll start a dance party. Don't be afraid to dance because you probably are going to have fun dancing. Look at all those people having fun dancing. Yeah. Why aren't you? You just don't, you're embarrassed or you don't know what to do. You're worried about how- you know, how how you're going to look or where to gaze, you know. <laughs> Are you worried about where to gaze when you're dancing? I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to um, tie it all together. Yeah. I, I, oh wait, I had a thought and then I lost it. All right. Yeah. Joy. Joy. On that note, I think... Everyone, thank you for listening. Check us out on patreon.com slash nobody's listening right. Keep your eyes peeled for our new cast iron only podcast that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Shh. Nobody's listening right.